Welcome to Electrical Analog to a Variable Mass Mechanical System. My name is Benjamin Bacon and I will guide you through this lesson. The material I will be discussing is about a single system modeled in two different energy domains. These are the mechanical translational and electrical energy domain. I will build upon the analogous relationships between the power conjugate variables in the two domains. In the mechanical domain, these are force and velocity, and in the electrical domain, these are current and voltage. The system that I will be discussing was described in detail in previous lessons. If you are not familiar with this system, you will benefit greatly from watching the previous presentations in this playlist. Now, I will concentrate on the electrical energy domain version of the system. This electrical version of the system is the version that I am developing for the purposes of system analysis and design. If you saw the previous videos, you will see that I have made a change in the mass equivalent capacitor element of this circuit. It is now composed of C0, the constant value of masses 1 or 2, and the variable mass function C of t that is the mass flow function changing with time. The reason I'm doing that is to see if after taking another derivative we get a second order equation in the electrical energy domain I will get elements that retain their equivalence to the relations in the mechanical domain if it also is taken to a higher order by one degree. What you see here are the second order equations for the electrical equivalent circuit and the mechanical system. The electrical equation will produce the second order mechanical system equation if I were to replace C of t with m of t, and also replace C0 with m0 everywhere in the electrical equation. Therefore, the equivalence and the analogy is preserved under transformation to a higher order. This is what I wanted to prove. From this point forward, we will work primarily with the second order equations from the electrical energy domain. If in the mechanical domain we have a constant force, then when we take the derivative of current in the electrical domain, the result will be zero. And we will have a situation where we have two terms which are equal to each other and opposite in polarity. If in the mechanical system we have forces that are not constant, then we will have to sum those forces on one side and take the derivative of them and get a different result. In any event, the dimensions should remain consistent after the transformation from first order to second order. Now I'm going to dive into the dimensional analysis of my system equations. And I'm doing this because we can get useful information from this exercise that will enable us to apply these equations more effectively when we put them to use. Beginning with the case of constant mass, when the equation is in the first order, we have for the electrical domain units of Ohm volt per second. 
and that is equivalent to the mechanical domains kilogram meter per second squared. Notice that with respect to time, the mechanical domain is one degree higher than the electrical domain. So we take these equations to the second order by differentiating them. The electrical domain results in farad volt per second squared, while the equivalent result in the mechanical domain is kilogram meters per second cube. And again, the mechanical domain is one degree higher than the electrical domain. Now looking at the variable mass case. In the first order, we would not have any difference. The result is the same in terms of units. So first order variable mass result per second is equivalent to kilogram meter per second squared. When we differentiate these equations, take them to the second order. Under the variable mass, we have more than one option as to how we define the units of the terms that result in the equations. The first option is that we can take the electrical result as Barrett per second times volt per second, and that being equivalent to the mechanical result of kilogram per second, a mass flow times meter per second squared, and acceleration. Or the other option is to take the result of a term as Barrett times volt per second squared being equivalent to the mechanical kilogram meter per second cube. So it is possible to interpret these inertia elements as uh, representing the instantaneous value of inertia. Notice that we get a factor meter per second cube. That is the introduction of an effect that is called surge. So the mechanical equations are second order when they're taken in terms of velocity, the power conjugate variable. But when we take it in order of distance or space, it becomes a third order result. Let us continue to examine that. It is possible to keep both models of the equation to the same order in our models if we stick to our usage of the power conjugate variables. If you recall, the power conjugate variables are, for the electrical side, current and volt, and the mechanical power conjugate variables are force and velocity. And they are called power conjugates because when you multiply those terms on each side, you would get the unit of watts or power. So under constant mass, to the first order, we have the same order with respect to time of the units on both sides, the electrical and the mechanical. They are both the order of second. Same happens when we take the derivative and take the equation to second order, then they are both to the same order, they're both second order, because the mechanical is not taken with respect to space as before, but now with respect to velocity, the power conjugate variable. And the same occurs with the variable mass. Both sides of the equation are with respect to second for the first order, and when we raise them to second order, they're both with respect to second squared. Even though we still have two options as to how we will define the units for terms in the variable mass case of second order, and also surge is still introduced, however, it is in its second order form, voltage per second squared. 
So surge can be a voltage per second squared or it can be an acceleration per second. This is the new term for most of you, I'm sure. But it's something that this system does possibly create and we would like to keep up with it. Let's now take a look at where those units come from. This is the table of the base SI units that we're looking at now. There are seven of them. They are meter, kilogram, second, ampere, kelvin, mole, and candela. And of these, we use the top four, meter, kilogram, second, and ampere. From these base units, other units are created that are called derived units. These are the derived electrical units that we use in our modeling and analysis. The Coulomb is the quantity of charge, but that doesn't really appear in this equation, but we could get it if we were to take a different arrangement of volt and capacitance. Also, we have electrical potential, which is the volt. We use the farad, and we use, well, the electrical resistance can be found as well, but we don't use it but it's one of the derived electrical units that commonly occurs, so it is good to include it. These are the derived mechanical dimensions for units. We have velocity, meter per second, acceleration, meter per second squared, surge, meter per second cube, and finally, force, Newton. Notice how these units are just higher derivatives of space with respect to time. These units are very similar in that they just take one derivative of the previous one. They're much more homogeneous and similar than it is the case with the electrical derived units. I am now going to extend my dimensional analysis into behavioral analysis of the system equations. First the analogs, the electrical and mechanical versions of them are not the same when we look at them in terms of the fundamental units. The electrical analog, the forcing function, current, is in terms of ampere, and mechanical analog, the forcing function, which is force, is in terms of meter kilogram per second squared. So these units fundamental units are not the same. However, these equations are the same in terms of their relationships and the arrangement of the effects. The current forcing function appear on one side of the equation and on the other side we have an inertial factor, mass, and the mechanical domain, capacitance, in the electrical domain and a rate factor, volt per second in the electrical domain corresponding to velocity per second in the mechanical domain. Now these equations will give the same results numerically if the magnitudes of the corresponding effects are made to be the same. Take a look at the current.
current and force equations. If the inertia effect are both set to a magnitude of 20, and they are multiplied times a rate effect to magnitude of 60 in both domains, then we'll get the same numerical result. Now it does not benefit us any to try to reverse that and mix the factors by saying that we were making an inertia effect 20 on one side and 60 on the other and then make the rate effect 60 on one side and 20 on the other. Even though you get the same numerical result that can become confusing, it confuses the issue, and is not the point. The point is that we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the types of effects in both equations. And if you stick strictly to this one-to-one -one correspondence, then that will enable you to take liberties with, with respect to the labels that you give the components in your electrical circuit. For instance, I can write the label C and the label M over a capacitor in my electrical circuit, or the label F or the label I over the current symbol in my electrical circuit. And that is because I stick strictly with the one-to-one -one correspondence between corresponding effects in both domains. I can now summarize my dimensional analysis and behavioral analysis. Since the rates and the effects of our system equations transform in the same way when we differentiate them or integrate them and their relationships persist or continue when we go from the first order to the second order we still can map our components or elements of the equations in the same way so the derivative of force with respect to time in the mechanical domain still maps one to one to the derivative of current respect to time in the electrical domain. That means that mass will still map to capacitance. The new terms of variable mass will map to variable capacitance. The new term of surge in the second order will map to volt per second squared. And recall that surge can also be written as velocity per second squared or acceleration per second. Now I summarize the main points that I was trying to make in this lesson. In taking a transformation from first order to second order, you will find the following that the analog are valid within the limits that were originally set for the system equations. We find that the corresponding parts of the equations transform in the same way. Therefore, their relationships will continue to remain valid even after the transformation has been made. And the models themselves will give valid results to the degree that the equations accurately represent the real world systems from which they were made. And that is the end of my lesson. Thank you for attending.